Greetings and blessings of God to all of our PG congregation and all of our listeners. We have come to the uh, end of Unit 3 in our Faith Pathway Study Guide. And this is uh, Lesson 13 out of Unit 3, The Spread of the Gospel. And this is for our Sunday lesson on May the 26th, 2019. And it is titled, Giving One's All. And our devotional reading is Psalm 34, verses 1 through 14. Our background scripture is Romans 12. And then our printed passage is Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 8. And our key verse is the first verse of the 12th chapter of Romans, which reads, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Or in King James, which is our reasonable service. Now our lessons aims are to relate Paul's teaching about being a living sacrifice to what he then says about being part of the body of Christ. Appreciate the importance of using your gifts both as a sacrifice to the Lord and as a reasonable member of the body. And last, analyze your gifts and abilities and commit those to the Lord for the good of the body of Christ. And our lesson is in three sections or in three parts. And the first part is a living sacrifice. And then our second part is a humble sacrifice. And our last part is a willing sacrifice. And as we look at uh, Unit 3 of our last month of study, uh, we realize that there's been a uh, conscious and a purposeful path. Uh, the lesson has dealt with our past. It's dealt with our, gift, our guilt. Uh, it has uh, dealt with um, our uh, shortcomings. Uh, it's dealt with us as individuals, and it's also dealt with us collectively. It has highlighted or identified uh, some of our shortcomings, our pitfalls, our stumbling blocks. Uh, it's recognized the uh, things that have influenced us. Uh, it's uh, identified how in some circumstances and situations we've allowed our pride to uh, get in the way. Uh, we have, uh, the lesson has identified um, certain um, tendencies that impede our, or our submission into the will of God. So as we look at the previous lessons, we can see like a building, a culmination which brings us to our lesson for this Sunday, the end of Unit 3, properly titled, Giving One's All. After we've recognized uh, what, uh, in, uh, in one way or another, what 
has uh, been some of our issues and things that have stalled us or things that have hindered us from fulfilling God's will. Uh, Now we can focus on, okay, now that those things have been identified, now we can move forward and now we can focus on, okay, now that I recognize what I am, who I am, and what I have. Now I can go ahead and move forward towards rendering that which God, the Creator, has given to me, now rendering that back to the Creator. Now, our first section starts off with a living sacrifice, and it is a very familiar passage of Scripture, um, which starts off simply by saying, I beseech you, meaning that it is a urgent call. Uh, it's sincere. Uh, it, 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 it's of significance. I, I beseech you. Therefore, brethren and sisters, that you, by the mercies of God. See, first it it acknowledges that the Creator has been merciful unto us. Uh, The mercy that that was afforded to us, uh, it was not uh, provided for us based upon any merit of our own but simply because the Creator is all-loving and loves us more than we love ourselves, therefore provides unto us the unmerited gift of mercy to us so that we could be what the Creator wants us to become. And so it first acknowledges that uh, as I'm asking you, to make this sacrifice, first be mindful, I'm asking you to do this by a gift that you received. I'm asking you to do this that you were pardoned. You didn't, you didn't get the punishment that was due us, but, but by the mercy of God, we were pardoned. And so therefore, if we would just present our bodies as a living sacrifice, Now, not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. So we know that Christ became the sacrificial lamb who was used uh, to pardon the sins of all of humankind. Uh, Christ became our sin offering. Uh, So, uh, but we're not asking, we're not asking or saying that because that was done, then that means that everything is finished. We know that the work of God was finished on Calvary, but we're not saying that our work is finished. We're not saying that that means that there's, we can just lay back, we can relax, we can just kick it, we can just coast on in. No, there's still work for us to do. And that work is that we have to sacrifice ourselves. We have to be living sacrifices, meaning that there's still some things that we need to change that we might be a better light to a dark world. There's still some things in our behavior in our conduct, in our relationship one with another that still needs improving. And so it says, present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is not asking too much, wherein it says as a reasonable service. It's not over the top. When we think about All that has been done for us by God. So I didn't say all that's been done for us by us. But I said all that's been done for us by God. 
then this is just our reasonable reaction. A lot of times we show kindness or we show a, uh, a certain reception uh, or a, a certain gratitude we generate to people who do kind things for us. People who uh, just give us a card and it was unexpected. Uh, someone just grants us a call and it was unexpected. Uh, someone goes out of their way uh, to do uh, a, a, uh, a act of kindness or goodness to us. And we feel obligated to uh, show them, hey, I appreciate. There's a sign of appreciation. I appreciate what you did for me. I recognize that you didn't have to do that. And so how much more then should we be willing to provide a reasonable service unto the creator who has given to us all things? So there is still uh, uh, a, a submission. There is still a service that we need to provide. Um, now, sometimes in order to, to make that uh, provision, sometimes in order for us to uh, provide that service, we may need to change uh, certain things about ourselves that may hinder us, that may prohibit us from providing that service. So the very next scripture says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we might show unto God what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God being activated in our lives, God's will uh, being manifested in our lives. Now, we'll notice here that two things are uh, listed that are kind of like uh, contrasting to each other. One is being conformed and the other one is being transformed. And <clears throat> some of us, uh, and when we think about uh, many times we identify the present state of things as the prince of darkness is in the world. And so if we acknowledge that the influences of evil and wickedness uh, are in the world and we identify that as being the prince of darkness, then we have to be very careful about how are we guarding ourselves against the prince of darkness. Are we allowing ourselves to be conformed to the ways of the world? I paused on purpose because uh, sometimes uh, it's easy for us to uh, exclude ourselves as though these uh, influences and these temptations are addressing everyone else, but I'm exempt. It, 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 hasn't, it hasn't persuaded me. It hasn't influenced me. But just think about uh, the time element. How much time do we spend in search of what God wants us to do? And how much time do we spend on TV programs, so-called reality shows, which I term as actuality, that they are actually what people are doing. Uh, they're not reality. Because reality is what a person or a thing does or becomes once it realizes itself. And what sells is actuality, is what we are right now. 
the absence of the presence of God's spirit in our lives. But for some reason, it's very attractive. All we have to do is just look at the ratings of different programs, talk shows, music that's listened to, different places that we attend on the frequent or on the regular. Um, so when we, when we start talking about, oh, I'm not conformed to the ways of this world, uh, just, uh, just do a, a little timetable. And, and let's see how much time we spend in worldly things. And see, worldly things don't have to be drugs. They don't have to be sex. They don't have to be theft. They don't have to be lying. There are many other influences in the world that can be, of a, can be identified in the realm of worldliness compared to godliness. So, uh, as a matter of fact, if we would just look at some of the things that are absent, we can see that, oh, these things, like family time, like being responsible members of the family, parents, children, grandparents, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, you know, how much family time. See, God created the family first. So when we start thinking about being conformed and transformed, let's look at the timetable. How much time are we spending on godly things compared to worldly things? And another thing on that verse, and we're going to move right along here, another thing on here is talking about being transformed by the renewing of our mind. See, uh, some of us, uh, some people think that you can change the outer self and it eventually will get to the inner self. You see, uh, we have a lot of programs that are out here about uh, a total makeover. You know, you can have your whole self made over from the outside almost to the point where you don't even recognize yourself anymore. You can have a makeover on an old vehicle. You can redo it, you can fancy it up, you know, you can make it look very attractive. Uh, you can move into a new, or you can have an old house and have it uh, renewed. You can have a makeover done on the old house and then look at it again and say, oh my God, I didn't look at what we've done. But those are external and those are outer changes. But the text didn't say to change your place of residence or to change your vehicle or to change your clothes or to uh, change your job or to change your neighborhood. The, the, the text said to change your mind. See, it didn't even say change your kidneys. It didn't say change your heart. It didn't say to change your eyes or your extremities. It said change your mind. That requires a uh, new stimulation. Uh, we have to stimulate the mind with things that we have not stimulated it with prior to the change. So when we start talking about being conformed and then being transformed, what things are we doing differently? You know, the old definition of insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. If nothing that we do has changed, if our diet doesn't change, if the places that we go doesn't change, if we don't read different material, if we don't try to do things uh, that are elevating, uh, things that are more productive and constructive, if we find ourselves in a rut and then we keep saying, I don't know why things have not changed. Has our behavior changed? 
Has our routine changed any? Uh, have our perspectives and our insights on things changed? How do we know what's changed in my behavior? What am I doing differently now that I didn't used to do? So as we uh, look at this first section, a uh, living sacrifice, you know, what things are we willing to give up? so that the will of God may be made manifest in us. And then it goes on to tell us in the second section that while we're sacrificing, do it humbly. Do it with a humble spirit. Uh, Sometimes if we uh, engage in a sacrifice, it is almost as though uh, we think that... uh, uh, People or something uh, owes us. If I'm giving up something, what am I getting in in exchange? Now, I'm sacrificing, so who, who else is sacrificing? Well, 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 what I'm gonna get then? No, see, see, uh, it said that we shouldn't uh, think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. It said for us to think soberly according to uh, how God is dealing with us by our own measure of our faith. See, sometimes we do things, especially in this day and time, you know, we do things expecting immediate gratification. And if we don't get immediate gratification right away, then uh, sometimes we're not willing to stay the path. We're not willing to continue the walk, to to stay on the journey, uh, to go through the process, because uh, I'm not getting anything like right away. Uh, You know, this is taking a little bit too long. I mean, I've already been doing it for a week, and I'm not really seeing the kind of things that inspire me to continue. But you see, uh, it said that... uh, that we are not to think highly of ourselves. See, when we start feeling as though there should be some type of immediate uh, uh, outcome, uh, I should see uh, something uh, that stimulates me to continue this sacrificing, not recognizing that We didn't get into some of the situations we find ourselves in overnight. And so it's not going to change overnight. Yet, the change is taking place, which requires us to look at it soberly, look at it consciously, look at it with our eyes and our ears open. Now, it then goes on to say that uh, as we are many members in one body, but that we don't all have the same office. Now, here comes another part uh, about us uh, recognizing once we realize how God has blessed us. And uh, I think this is such a wonderful uh, setting which it identifies us in the physical realm because we all can recognize uh, the different members of our body. Uh, You know, all of our extremities, all of our internal organs, and and just the the magnificent uh, wonderment of how God made and created us. But when we recognize these things, Uh, we realize that all of the different members of our body all have different function. But our body is not in uh, uh, chaos. It's not in uh, an argument, you know, with the different members of the body. But, But the body 
uh, functions in uh, the totality of one because all of the different members of the body recognize their part, they recognize what their function is, they recognize what their role is, they recognize how if I do this, you'll do that, and if you do that, this part will do this over here, and because this part is doing what it's supposed to over here, it makes this other part over here do what it's supposed to do. So it works in concert. It's like a wonderful orchestration. It's a symphony of agreement and participation and engagement all together to reach one goal. So when we start talking about being humble in our sacrifice, uh, we recognize that, yeah, we, we have different parts. Uh, yeah, we're all uh, just one body, but we're one body in Christ. And every one of our members is a member of another. We're connected. Um, I recently sprained my ankle, and although uh, my ankle is at the base of my body, when I walked, I recognized that my ankle was tender, that I had stretched the ligaments uh, in my ankle. And uh, the doctor actually told me that it would have been uh, a faster recovery if I had fractured or broken my ankle. But because I sprang it, because I stretched and, and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, overextended the ligaments in my ankle, that it would actually take longer for it to recover. And what I've learned through that process is, is that uh, when I step the wrong way, my whole body, <laughs> my whole body responds. Even though it's all the way down at my ankle, I feel it all the way to the top of my head. I, 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 I recognize that because my ankle is tender, that the other parts of my body have to uh, make adjustments. You know, I, I had to, before my ankle, I could go up and down the steps. I didn't have to grab the handrail. But because my ankle is injured, now I recognize to compensate for that, I have to grab the handrail to try to redistribute the weight so that I don't apply too much weight to my ankle and then aggravate it again and then encounter that, you know, uh, that overwhelming sensation where you realize, oh, I applied too much weight. So um, when one member of your body, no matter what that member is, when it's injured, when it's suffering, the whole body responds to it. And that brings us over into our willing sacrifice. Now, this part here identifies these different members of the body. And it talks about how their functions are. But it is relating it more so into uh, the different members of the body having different functions, having different gifts. So here through the 12th chapter of Romans, verses 6 through 8, it talks about how uh, we have different gifts, but all these different gifts, they weren't of our choosing. See, those that have the gift of prophesying, they didn't put a reservation in at birth and say, you know, God, out of the gifts that you have, I decided I want the one on prophesying. See, the, the gift really doesn't belong to us. The gift belongs to God. And see, God is the one who makes the gift manifest itself when we are in tune spiritually 
with the giver of the gift. You see, like sometimes we think of a gift as it's something that belongs to me. You know, it's like somebody went out and purchased a gift and then they gave it to us. And we say, oh, this is my gift. So I can use this gift whenever I want to. And you can't take it back from me because this is my gift. But see, the gifts that are given by God, uh, those gifts, they are lent to us. See, we have them for the time that God blesses us to be here. But the manifestation of the gift, that comes from the giver of the gift. You see, sometimes, now you remember Samson was blessed with strength. But Samson, when he was not in tune with the giver of the gift, when he broke that spiritual bond, and then he decided that he would flex himself because he thought the gift belonged to him and that he could just use it and call it whenever he chose. But he recognized that if he was out of the will of God, that he couldn't just use God's gift and not be in the will of God. So we have to recognize, first of all, that who does the gift belong to and that the giver of the gift is the one decided that I'm going to allow you to prophesy. I'm going to allow you to teach. I'm going to allow you to have the diversity of tongues. I'm going to give you the gift of healing. I'm going to give you the gift of the spirit. I'm going to give you the helps, service, governments. I'm going to bless my body, which are my people who are called according to my purpose. I'm going to bless my body with different gifts to serve my body, my people, because I already know the things that they are in need of. And so I have equipped my body with different gifts so that then when those needs arise, I've already created that element, that member of the body already with the abilities and with those uh, needs of functioning. I've already blessed my body with those things to make sure that my body is served. So I hope that something has been said to help us all be better manifestations of God's will. And it is always our prayer that the blessings of God would be upon all of us now and forever. God bless you and God keep you.